it's absolutely wonderful that Apple has now given us a device that we as a third party manufacturer can make the most of. And with the new Mac Pro, it's a key item here is Thunderbolt 2. So recall that Thunderbolt 2 includes the PCI Express protocol. So that makes it very easy for us to take the type of power you used to having in previous Mac towers and attaching it here. So the process of making your life simpler means that you still have to interact with professional devices. And 4K Simplified is about taking that Thunderbolt port, adding a device like our new IO 4K so that you can connect to all the professional equipment you need to. Now, in real life, things don't start with you. They start on the acquisition front. And what I have in my hands here is the KeyPro Quad. So for those of you not familiar with it, the KeyPro Quad literally takes either baseband or 4K RAW from a camera like a C500 and encodes it into ProRes. And then you move into Edit. And the whole thing is unified through ProRes. So right now, today, there's a shoot going on in LA that's been entirely done in ProRes with KeyPro Quads with a C500, three cameras. And it's going to simplify their lives. So the workflow that's involved is, as I said, the camera can either be raw or baseband. We will do the debayering in real time in our hardware. We'll turn it into ProRes for you. And you're going straight to an SSD. And that SSD just needs to be read by the Mac Pro. Of course, we make a dock so you can put your SSD in there. The device itself, unlike anything else out there, is supporting multiple workflows all at the same time. It's got a Thunderbolt port in the back, so that if you need to capture raw material, you can pass it through to a Mac Tower, for instance, and capture it there. While it's doing the ProRes recording, while it is doing 4K over 3, uh, 3G SDI, HD and 4K over HDMI, your choice, and we always have a dedicated down conversion to HD SDI because we realize you're probably not taking your most expensive 4K monitor into the field, right? So it's about being practical. Now, the Mac Pro, once you sit down to edit, needs an equally powerful partner. And so we have the IO 4K. And I'm pleased to say today that you are able to order it as of this week. So the IO 4K is going to extend what you can do with the Mac Pro. Because as professionals, we're still going to want to connect to monitors, 10-bit monitors, preferably over SDI. And everything you've seen play to this point, being fed to that Christie, is going through the IO 4K. So we have a dedicated HD SDI output again, because of course you're going to want that secondary monitor, HDMI in and out, two Thunderbolt ports. We've been unique on this front in this business, so we understand that you're going to sometimes have to work, for instance, with a laptop. You're in the field of MacBook Pro, and then you're going to find that you need a couple more ports for Thunderbolt, right? So it's a pass-through technology. Also, 12-volt 4-pin XLR. So if you're literally in the middle of nowhere, you can take your IDX batteries, uh, whatever you're using for a power source, and just plug in. There's nothing proprietary in, time, in terms of connectivity. RS-422 to control decks, reference and time code, multi-channel analog audio out because most of us still use analog mixers when you're sitting in the edit bay, right? It's a beautiful device. And so this is what it's doing. Simply through a Thunderbolt 2 connection, it is giving you all the other connections that you're gonna need for your professional equipment. So whether that's high-end monitoring mixers, professional monitors for doing your uh, color work, and of course, the ability to go down to HD, which is what a lot of you will still have in your uh, facilities, and deal with cameras, et cetera, coming in. Here is the pack drive we've been recording to. So again, it's an SSD. We have a little pack drive reader, which again connects through Thunderbolt. So it's a little pack drive down here. And what I'll do is I'm gonna swap over. Here I am in Final Cut, where we have this project. And again, this is all at 4K, right? Skimming through it very simply and easily. And we need to replace a shot. So I'm going to come over to my Finder. So we take a look at our desktop here, put it in. These drives, an SSD drive, are indeed HFS+. Plus. So there's no formatting or anything you need to do. If I take a look inside the folder, this is where the files have been captured to. 
I can simply come click on any of my shots. And the machine is powerful enough that just by hitting the space bar in the finder alone, I can easily run through it and take a look at my shots. Couldn't be simpler. This is also a fantastic way for you to work with directors on set, right? Because you need the ability to show them stuff quickly and figure out, did you get what you needed? And this material, again, was shot in Iceland through a Canon C500 to a Keypro quad. So I'll just finish with my space bar there, come into Final Cut. And what I need to do is just simply import. And again, as Luke showed you earlier, with my drive set here, I can do my input, import selected, and D, just leave the files in place. Okay, normally, of course, you would import it so you get it into your full-on uh, storage system so you've got it set up where you need it. All right, so with this in place right now, here's some of my fixes. Come in, grab a section I need. Time is really valuable. Uh, to rent editing suite for one hour is actually really expensive. So if you can speed up the workflow and save time, that's... Like now what you're seeing there again, of course, is that while I'm on this clip, I might need to do uh, my fit to fill. So apologies here. So again, just fill the screen up because that actually was shot at 4096, right? So it's that ability, again, to just work very simply in Final Cut Match really valuable formats. Uh, to rent editing suite for one hour is actually really expensive. So if you can speed up the workflow and save time, that's a key factor for, for our clients. And that, of course, gives us the opportunity to give out lower bits and, and get more products. And if you're able to pull one product a year just out of that space that you were able to make with, with better workflow, you are basically paying up a lot more than one keeper. And that's it. It's as simple as that. So much like Apple themselves, we're trying to make your life simpler so you can simply get on with what you really care about, and that's being creative.